Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name's Clint Button, and I'm a granite sculptor. This is the second installment of the finished carving of this tulip bevel. I've got quite a few videos about this stone because it's, there's a lot of information, a lot of opportunity to learn in producing a stone like this because there's, uh, there's so much work to do in order to prep the stone for the final carving. Now we've got this working Try to get the light on here to show. Uh, working on the separation, trying to get these worked apart carefully. As I mentioned before, it's important that they're spatially related to each other properly. They're spatially related to the stem so that they're balanced on each side and that they're also the proper height from the background so they don't look like they're foreshortened. This is not a project with a lot of foreshortening like if it was a a bar relief of a, a figure of Mary or Christ or something else. Uh, these are, because the profile is about an inch and a quarter, and they're basically full size, almost full round. Um, so, uh, and this side we've also got to work with having everything agree um, by producing this leaf. We've got a stem that transverse travels behind this blossom. We've got a stem for this blossom that has to be oriented properly. It still needs a little bit of tweaking. Then I've got the edge of this leaf that comes behind here that will be in the back. And then I've got this stem. So there's a lot to work together and make sure that everything's in the right orientation, the right location, and the right elevation. So um, keep working. Try to keep this video a little shorter. The last one ran a little long. It's just hard to break this up uh, because there's so much to tell, so much to do, and so much to consider in order to get the right result. So we'll keep working on it and keep posting video. What I'm trying to do now is work this down, but I have to get this ground justified so it comes in and it meets on both sides and it's not skewed or tipped. That'll help eliminate the ground, you won't see it, and you'll just see the tulips. And I've got to, as I work this down, I have to keep this mass relatively centered on this stem. And so this distance here will be closer to what this is on the model because the top of this lower second bud is going to be around here so I still got that much to take off on this one this one will take a little bit off this one's pretty close I just have to sink it and stretch it but it's important to go around and clean up all of these intersections so that everything looks plain the idea is to make it look so normal that it disappears so you don't see it because if this was crooked in some way or had a web up that was up here it wouldn't make any sense so by eliminating a lot of these details that create visual noise that confound or confuse the viewer they don't see it all they see are what they perceive to be tulips that's the whole goal you just want to make the bad stuff disappear make it look like tulips Okay, I'm working on the petals now on the flowers. I've got a couple of them worked in. And I'll try turning the light on and see if you can see this a little bit better. I moved the stone, placed it a little bit lower, easier to reach. It's also towards the end here. The position of the stone will be down on the ground. And so I want to make sure that it's in that position to... Uh, carve it so that it demonstrates properly uh, all the rough out work up high no big deal 
give you a little bit of leverage to work on it. Um, but uh, have been doing some of this work with a smaller half inch Bicknell, just an old Bicknell machine and uh, really just a few little chisels. These, uh, these pedals will have a curve, a little concave inside the edge. The lines all run, they don't radiate necessarily, but they emanate from this, this center um, fissure along the, along the pedal. And then the lines on the actual leads, or the actual pedals will flare out that way. So trying to axe it that way and develop this thinness edge so that it looks good. Um, one thing that'll produce a little more delicate detail <clears throat> is to use a square chisel to lower this edge, lower this surface here to produce this edge versus cutting it like this. This will stun a straight white line in there and it really stands out. These are pretty, pretty coarse. If I lower the light, you'd see it more. We'll do that later. Um, but the idea is that these pedals will have more surface texture and it will actually show better as they age and they get a little bit dirty, hold a little bit of debris. You'll see the lines more just like the lines on these leaves run the length of the leaf. So you can see a little bit of the axing now. Um, but uh, getting ready to finish this last closed bud, relatively closed bud, and uh, then I'll work on these two more open ones. There's three actually, two here and one on the other side. Okay, I've got the closed buds done and this one partial open. Right here in this light, it's a little easier to see the tooling or the axing on here, these striations that emanate from the center and go out. And so those will dirty up just like you can see a lot of the axing that's not resolved here. I've still got to fix the overall panel once all this is done. I've got to get all the edges where I want them to be and then tune the center panel to it. Um, this is uh, pretty close, so keep working on opening up these last two major blossoms. And I uh, have to be very careful because this is head grain, this is typical. If this was a normal die where this was the joint and this stood vertical, the grain would be going the same direction. So things are gonna break like that end will fall right off very easily. So you have to be careful to carve it and not put pressure vertically because you'll just pop that end right off. So I've also turned these edges a little bit. I noticed, mentioned before carving a concave. By carving a concave here and then blending it as it turns, it creates a little bit of reverse, uh, which is, shaped like a sine wave the transition you have a little bit of down and then up and then over and that will help accentuate the hump of this edge uh, and make it a little more obvious and just having an edge sticking up this is different light over here um, this edge is actually turned down quite a bit and it thins it up it makes it look really good so 
Uh, hard to see in this light. We'll have more light later. So back to carbon. discussion on how you develop a form. This last blossom needs to be really full. And I've done this with the other blossoms, uh, but I wanted to talk about it here a little bit. I have to make sure that my proportions and ratio, height to width, is correct. And then it bounces with these other tools. If this tulip's a quarter inch longer or a quarter inch shorter than the other three that it's near, it's going to look funny. So I want to make sure that I get my dimensions scaled so that it's proportionate to all the other ones here and on the other side. That's one reason why you carve the same things at the same time. Why well, I did the foreclosed buds together. Now I did this one that's sort of partially open and this will be more open. And this one will be more open, so I'll do the two of them together. you got to develop your eye, your ability to see what you're working on. It's real easy when you work alone to go blind, to lose perspective. Go away, do something else, cook dinner, ride your motorcycle, hug your kids, whatever. Get away so you can see it until you can train yourself to know what you're looking at. Now, this volume is really good. But before I just randomly start chopping off the top, if I cut the bottom, because this bottom doesn't curve under as, as well as it should yet, because I, I had to wait till the end. So now if I turn this bottom under, it's gonna change the way this demonstrates or the way this looks. So I may be better if I wanna shorten this bloom up to resolve this material here and this material here what I'm gonna do because that's what needs to be done instead of just chopping the top off and making it shorter because if I do that this edge is still gonna be wonky and when I cut that edge off after this volume is gone I can't make it any bigger so I'll tune this underneath get it nice on the stem I've done that with these others and it really changes the way they appear so it's important to know where to take material off where to leave it and when to do it. So uh, this is uh, this. These last two blooms have to be the they're they're the, the focal point. People are going to look at the open blossoms. And so I've got to make sure that they look really well. So I'm going to work on cleaning this up without rubbing a chisel on here and boogering up the ends of these by stressing them. So I have to clean this off, get this nice nicely shaped. And this is pretty close to what my dimensions are here and here. So this is still. This is a little bit shorter than this, but once I clean these up, probably come down here just a little bit more off the tip, it's going to look really good. Okay, we're pretty well wrapped up the carving. I uh, still have to do the dog tag in the corner, but that'll be done as the background is done. But this is just to give you a rough comparison of the clay maquette versus the direct car tools. Uh, aside from the change on the edge of the niche and uh, that the paper wanted the floral, some of the blossoms a little more open. You can see everything lines up pretty well. Let's see if I can set this clay out of the way. Okay, done up the edge of this leaf, this uh, stem, um, cut a small concave on the end of the stem to just help it show a little better. It makes it look sharp uh, without actually having square edges because it creates a better shadow line. 
So um, still have to work on work the whole panel down because now it's time to true it up. There's a few little pits in the center where it's high, and uh, I'll show you some good good um, guidance on how to really true the panel up. But uh, open this blossom up more than the than this my cats, and also open this one up more. Patron wanted them as open as possible to represent a full life, and so this is, uh, I could open them more, they'd be more fragile, so this is about as far as I dare go. But um, overall, the flow's pretty well, pretty happy with it. And uh, as I do the panel, because I want this dog tag to be very, very thin, uh, like a normal dog tag is here in the corner, I'm gonna wait, it'll justify this whole background, and then I'll do this, and after I'm done working around here, then I'll clean that off and finish up that stem, just so that termination isn't fragile while I'm carving. I don't want to lean on it, have it pop off. So, uh, but uh, we'll go around the edge. There's a couple spots around the border. You see where there's a small demarcation right there, and that all just needs to be axed off. And uh, I'll get it all tuned up, but it's uh, time to wrap up this video and uh, the carbon tools on a bevel. And once again, my name is Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. Uh, before I quit, let me point something out. All this talk about having a studio with lots of light, everything you want. If you're doing work like this where everything is determined by value, and contour and shape and surface texture. It's raining today, no light, wonderful. I have total control of my light, everything's very neutral. I can turn on my lamp and it's perfect. So this gives me total control so I can have a better result, produce a nicer stone and uh, it's just wonderful. So uh, nice day, natural light, and start again. Once again, my name is Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. Covered some tulips on a bevel. Nice piece of Georgia blue. Thanks for stopping by.